Good morning. Oh, good morning, guys. Christy, um, what is your what is your coffee this morning? Or do you, are you not a coffee? Uh, good morning. Well, I have not been out and about yet this morning. So this is just like my regular old Keurig coffee with a stevia and a little oat milk. But I'll be getting an iced coffee later. There you go. I love that. Yeah, Where I love you, that mug too. I do too. It's adorable. Books. books everywhere. Where do you go for your iced coffee? So different places, but I have to tell you my favorite is historic grounds. Mm-hmm. It's so good. And it's adorable. So, and adorable. It's so cute. I know. And they're the cutest family and they're it's just so a cute nice. little. And it gives me like a little longer walk with salt too. Like it's, it's, you know, I get like, it's maybe like three quarters of a mile from my house or something. So I get, he gets a little walk in. That's, That's really good. good. Also the, the, your dog's name makes me so happy every time. Salt. Thank you. Yeah, that was little Will. He was like two and decided he wanted a dog named Salt and it took eight years, but we got him one finally. So. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> and what kind of dog is Salt? He, Salt's a doodle, right? Salt, yes, he is a mini golden doodle. And w- I got to tell you though, we we think there's some some other things hidden in there. Like he's definitely got like some hound dog paws and, you know, he's he's of dubious origin, but he's real I sweet. I love that. I love that. Oh, salt. That makes me happy. And me he's too. a little uh, mysterious. A little mysterious. Uh, yeah. Okay, Christy, before we get started, will you please show everybody um, your rug? Because you guys, we, Christy and I, we just realized yes. that we have the same rug. We have the same season. rug. Look, look at this. I mean, you guys, yes. what are the, I mean, and shout out to another like North Carolina and UNC grad. Cause these are Laura Park. You're Design. exactly right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're Annie Selkie, but Laura Park designed them. There was a design. Collection. I've forgotten that. You're exactly right. Yeah. 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 I really love her. She circle. has great stuff. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Well, this is so fun. This is so fun. I know Christy and I recently went to this. It wasn't really that recently anymore, was it? We went to this women women's conference at Carolina. Oh, that's and, right. And we we ended up we were we were dates. We ended up Good. being dates. Good. We, we had like a little dinner date. We had we so did. much fun. I know it was really fun. It was really fun. Precious. Okay, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited this morning to have best-selling author Christy Harvey here with us. She lives in Beaufort. She's a great friend. She's a client. She's all the things. And she is a fantastic author. So if you've not read anything about Christy, you are in luck because I recently finished her book that is coming out this Tuesday. So we're catching you right on the precipice yes. of, mm-hmm, of the launch. It's called A Happier Life and it is set right here in Beaufort. So You're cool. going to fall in love with Keaton. She's adorable. The story <laughs> is fantastic. And I love the overlap, Christy, that you pointed out that so much of the story is centered around the old home store, which is exactly what we have on the horizon for us here too. Yes, that's exactly right. So yeah, and it was actually kind of a last minute addition. Um, the old homes tour connects the 1976 storyline and the present day storyline. And um, I was telling the ladies backstage that um, this was completely random. The book releases the week of the old homes tour. It was a just total coincidence. And so I'm going to be having two launch events at the old homes tour. Yeah. Um, big one is my favorite of the year. It's the Sunday at champagne brunch at Vovkly Co is one of our sponsors this year, which Ooh. is pretty great. Um, but yeah, so that's on Sunday, I think at 11 at the Beaufort hotel and, um, it's just my favorite event. So I'm really excited about that. And then Saturday night, the night before the old homes tour after party, if you have a ticket to the old homes tour, that's also your ticket to the after party where you can buy one for $20, but live rosé and goodies, and I'll be there signing books and it's going to be great. That is so fun. Okay. So do you mean, is that this Saturday, like tomorrow and Sunday or the next week? Um, I'm sorry. It's the next week. It's like the okay. 29th and 30th. 29th and 30th. Cool. Got it. Okay. Yeah, got the it. 29th so your, and 30th. Your book yeah. is released and then you're able to yes. attend these events, help promote it, all that stuff. Cool. Yes. That's yes. So, so I'm fun. actually going, um, kind of like the Midwest for the next, uh, few days. And then I'll fly home on Saturday for the Saturday night event. So Yay. that is so yeah. great. So Chrissy, will you fill folks in on kind of the premise of a happier life for yes. for anyone who who might not know? I would love to. So a happier life is about a woman named Keaton, which Mary Cheetah mentioned, who um, knows that her grandparents passed away in an accident before she was born, but she doesn't know that her mother never sold her childhood home in Beaufort, North Carolina, which of course she thinks is totally nuts that this woman has kept this house for 50 years So she decides that she'll be the one to go back to Beaufort, clean out the house, put it on the market. She does not think this will be a big deal at all, but um, she gets to town and starts sort of wading through the detritus of her grandparents' lives. And she starts to realize 
that maybe the stories that she's been told about her grandparents weren't hundred percent true. And so on the other point of view, we get to see Rebecca St. James, who is her grandmother and maybe one of my favorite characters I've ever written. I just Great love character. her so much. Yeah. Um, and she's known for her hostessing skills. She's a big entertainer. And, um, we watch her story unfold from 1935 to 1976 in Beaufort and, you know, all the things that happen are, are real in the story. Um, and uh, we get to find out what happened to Rebecca and Townsend St. James. So their stories kind of collide and there's a little bit of a secret in there. I <laughs> love that. And I love, I was kind of on the edge of my seat to find out what really happened. And I loved the way, I just loved it. I thought it was so um, well-written and so interesting and just, I don't know. I really loved that. And there's a real estate uh, something going yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, there's a real estate component. And I have to say, I mean, Mary Cheatham sold us this house that I'm sitting in right here. And I don't know if you even remember, but the house is very similar. <laughs> I mean, Christy's vision, I'm telling you, the house that she's sitting in right now did not look like that when they bought it. <laughs> that is for sure. That is for sure. Exactly right. I love that. So Christy, one of the things I want to know is what would surprise people most about your process of mm. writing? Mm. Probably that I don't know what's going to happen. It is, I, I'm a real like fly by the seat of your pants. I kind of have like a little nugget of an idea when I start. Um, in fact, so I hope people will read the book. So if you read the book, this will make more sense to you. But there's the first scene that I wrote in this book is, um, one where Keaton is in the house and she turns around and there's a little boy like standing in the kitchen. And um, it's about, I don't know, 75 or 80 pages into the book. And so I don't really start at the beginning. I don't really end at the end. It's just sort of this um, like collaboration of all these different thoughts that I have. And they somehow hopefully, but God's willing end up being a story. That is so interesting. Huh. So, okay. And when you're done writing one book, Christy, do you take a break and like take it in or do you just start writing immediately again? Well, so it's a little bit of a long process because I'll write a first draft and then I usually put it aside for a couple of months and I'm, I'm generally not writing too much during that time. And then I'll go back, do like a really deep dive edit, do a deep dive edit with my editor. I'm working on that for a couple months and then um, copy edits. But like the way it normally works. So my 2025 book, just went to copy edits, but now I'm leaving on book tour. So I'll be gone for, you know, three or four weeks. And then when I come home, copy edits will be back to me. I'll finish that. And then I'll start writing the next one. So it's it, the promotion is part of the cycle too. Um, yes. okay. And we've kind of gotten it down because worst case scenario would be that you're trying to write while you're on tour. Cause you can't, I mean, if you're in, you know, 30 cities in 21 days and there's no way. I mean, you just can't do it. That makes so much sense. Do you love yeah. that part? Do you like the tour part? I mean, is it? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, It's really kind of gratifying to get to go out and see readers and talk about this book and um, just get some feedback because it is a very solitary thing. I mean, you're writing like in this little, you know, cubicle over here and like, you don't know how people are going to react to the story. So to get to hear from them, is one of the best parts to me. I, I think that. that's so cool. And what about your friends in fiction? Y'all, if you don't follow, you, first of all, mm -hmm. you need to follow Christy, but then you need to follow friends in fiction, which is this, I just think that's so cool that you've created this community. I mean, yeah. to me, it feels like there's the internal part, which is the relationship between you and these other folks who do what you do. To yeah. your point, it is solitary. So to have somebody else who can see you and understands what it feels like to do all that, that has to be such a wonderful part of that, not to mention then the content that you all together put out for other people to consume. Yeah. So Friends in Fiction um, is a podcast and web show that I have with Mary Kay Andrews, Kristen Harmel, and Patty Callahan Henry, who are three of my dearest friends and um, you know, amazing best-selling authors. And we started this web show like during the pandemic, and we were going to do seven episodes. And then uh, we're four and a half years in, so um, it's just been great. And that's actually one of the great things is, you know, they'll tour with me a little bit. We'll have some friends and fiction events on tour, which is really nice. And especially, I mean, the, the few days before the book comes out are just kind of indescribable. And it's really nice to have like these, this group that knows exactly what you're going through and they totally understand and, you know, they know the right thing to say and they know what to ask. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Because you're kind of a wreck. <laughs> I totally get that. So I guess the part I don't understand about that is that makes so much sense. Like you've brought this baby into the world and you're getting ready <laughs> yeah. to actually like launch it out there. Yeah. So like, 
what, what happens on Monday or on Tuesday? What happens? So like the book's out there and then what happens? Like, how does it like you, like you shoot a shot and then how do you know if you've, if you made the shot or not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of lead up too. I mean, I don't know if anybody follows me on Instagram or Facebook, you've seen me getting these like big orders of books coming in and I'm signing them all. So there are things I know, like I know, you know, certain bookstores have had like really large pre-orders and we see a little bit, like we know that the book is on a really good trajectory. So we know that kind of ahead of time because we can see pre-orders coming in. We know like, you know, which retailers are taking it and that kind of thing. So we have an idea of like how it's going to go, but Tuesday's the big day. It hits stores. People start buying all the kind of buzz that you've been trying to build for the last six months kind of comes to a head. Articles come out, you know, all those types of things that you've been really working towards. So it's like, you've done this thing for the last, you know, six to 12 months. And then it kind of all hits in this one week. And though that first week is really the big week for, are you going to hit bestseller lists? Is it going to be, you know, because you're really, that first week is kind of like when you are, you're on stage. Um, and there are a lot of things that go into that. So, um, and then of course the tour is, is a big part of that. So I will, you know, pack up and I am coming home for those events, which is great, but I'm pretty much, you know, packing up and leaving for three weeks and going all over the country. So there's that part too. So you just feel this, like, it's like this anxious, excited buzz about everything, but I don't even know how to explain it. So you're, you're just nervous that it's gonna, you want it to meet everybody's expectations. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. Now, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, and it's going to exceed them. It's going to exceed them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now for folks who might not know, can you explain the criteria to get on the bestseller list? Yes. Okay. So this is really crazy. So um, it depends on what the list is. So like USA Today, the USA Today bestseller list or the Publishers Weekly bestseller list, um, or even like the Wall Street Journal, they're a little bit truer. Um, these books sold the very most copies this week and they go across genre. They grow across format. So I would be on the same list as um, Green Eggs and Ham on the USA Today. Oh, okay. Like it's the, you know, and, yeah. and I say that because Green Eggs and Ham is always on and you want to be like, That's for real, who has not bought Green Eggs and Ham? <laughs> like how, okay. how? Um, and then the New York times list is a little bit different because, um, it's broken down into like the hardcover bestseller list and Uh, the paperback uh, and the children's, but they're only 15 slots and, um, some books, as you can imagine, I mean, you know, Kristen Hanna's book will be on for two years or there, there, there's usually only one or two slots for that week. And it's all weighted in different ways. Like we don't really know. It's like kind of a secret, I guess. Like they can pick whoever they want, basically. Um, so you're always very nervous because you're like, we could have the numbers, but we might not. Hit. And you know, you just never know. So it's really exciting when you do, and it's a bummer when you don't. But you you move on, and you know, that's so you can't interesting. Work. That's really I'm really cool. The... I love all these questions. I, I, have, <laughs> I have one more question. <laughs> okay, which is because you know I would care deeply about this. Does someone plan like your hotels and your like, dinners <laughs> out for you for the tour? Like, do you have dinner reservations? I'm very stressed about that. Well, you're going to laugh at me. So I-, I think pretty much everyone else in the world that does this, like their publisher just plans it and they just arrive. But I am very, I, I like to know what the hotel is and where I'm staying and where I'm eating. And so I plan that like my, like six months in advance. You sound like, oh my gosh, I love, I and know, they I really laugh. Should- yeah. Well, you know, I mean, just uh, like we were like, okay, well, we have a reservation here, but we have a backup reservation here in case we feel like this. And then if we just want to eat at the hotel, we should probably have a reservation. Yeah. So I'm crazy. And every year they're like, you know, we can do this. This is not difficult. And I'm like, I know, but it makes me feel this like semblance of control over That's my right. fate. You're not crazy. You're just prepared. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I love that. You know, my friend Sloan Freeman, I don't know if you know Sloan, she's such a delight. She always says luck favors the prepared. Mm-hmm. I feel that deeply. I guess that's like a, a saying that I just somehow missed earlier in life. And now I'm like, wow, I've never heard that. So that good? I, I love that luck favors the prepared. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> We're just prepared. For I like it. Right. Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. We're just prepared. That's exactly right. Prepared. Oh my gosh. You're going to have so much fun. This Yay. is just, Chrissy. We're thrilled for you. We're yes. thrilled for you. And Meg, we have a few little rapid fire questions that we want to ask you because Yet again, we are set in Beaufort right here, which is everyone's favorite small town where you happen to actually live full time. So we'd love to get some 
some information about what you actually love to do and where you love to hang out in Bedford. Yes. Love it. Yeah. So Christy, I know we talked about coffee a little yeah. bit earlier and you love historic yes. grounds. Is there mm -hmm. any other coffee shop that you love to kind of fuel your day before a day full of writing? Yeah. So I love historic grounds, but I love crew too. They have great coffee. Um, and I will, and I will tell you, my husband goes to Turner street every single morning. So we're real equal opportunity, you know, coffee drinkers in our family. You can't go wrong. No. You can't go wrong. Yeah. In yeah. With coffee. Yeah. And you can walk yeah. to all of this, Christy. How magical was that? Absolutely. It's the greatest. It yeah, really good. Is. It's really good. Now, if you want to go to a quiet place and read, maybe it's your home, but maybe it's somewhere else. Where do you like to go for a little cozy spot? So I really like to be, I'm a big outside person. So I love that little, like the historic grounds at the historic site, like just the little, like it's so calm and they're like all the like little old houses and buildings in there. And you just feel like kind of gone back in time. It's very quiet. The birds are chirping, but people are walking by. I love it. It's so charming. That's it a feels good so one. quintessential Beaufort. It does. Yeah. 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 So where's your favorite place to grab lunch during a busy day? I mean, it's always Beaufort grocery. I just Ooh. love Beaufort grocery lunch. It's my favorite. And even if it's a busy day, I know that's a very like sit down, but they're so fast and on it that you can like get in and get out and have a great lunch. And it's so good. Great well, tea. What is your favorite item that you order there? Um, I mean, this is not going to sound that exciting, but I am, I love their cob salad. I order it like, almost, like it's, what, it's so good. You have, a it is a wildly yeah. better cob salad than like any other cob salad. And I tell people that when they come, like I had an author in last week and he, he was interviewing me and we went and I was like, I know this is going to sound weird, but the cob salad's like, it's really exceptional. It's, yeah. And he ordered it and he was like, it really is. It's exceptional. What is it about it? I don't know. It's, it's the type of lettuce that they use. It's all mixed up. Then the egg component is really good. They give you enough egg. I hate when they don't give you enough egg. Sure. The dressings are delicious. The bacon or whatever the, the bacon, it's yeah. real bacon. It's yeah. not like these bacon yeah. bits, but it's like super crispy and really good. And the, the chicken, it's like real roasted chicken, but it's shaved. So it's thicker than like a deli meat, but it's thinner than like, it's not like a big honking chicken to eat. shrimp. Yeah. 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 So it's ginormous, which makes me really happy. I love a large yeah. salad. Okay. I'm so glad that we got to talk about this and the olives. Yeah. It's like just the, the perfect olive. little bite. It's, so, it's so good. Like, I mean, I'll call it in and go pick it up if I'm over there showing a house or doing something over in Beaufort. Yeah. I mean, it's my favorite. <laughs> I called one in yesterday. I was like, I'm busy. I'm just going to call it in. It's yeah. terrible. But it's oh, this so is so good to know. Oh my God. It's the best. Okay. Yeah. Two more, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. We love, uh, I personally love everything you wear. But if you want a comfy outfit for a day of writing, where would you go to get that? I mean, Beverly Linen has such good stuff. They have such good clothes and like comfy dresses. And I have to say, like, this is embarrassing. I shouldn't admit this live, but I love to get up in the morning, like before everybody else and write like in my bathrobe and all of my bathrobes are from <laughs> for linen. I really? love them. I have like a line of them and they are so comfy and so cozy and they have great PJs and great clothes and everything. So I feel like we're learning so much about you that you like to write in a bathrobe. I do. I that's, love it. Yeah. That's amazing. Kind I of like very... that. Now, yeah. last question, Christy, where is your favorite place to relax and unwind at the end of the day? So I love going to blue moon at night and just like sneaking in and it's like a little bit dark and they have like a perfect champagne by the glass and the food's always really good. And again, back to the salads, like you can have like a big, great, amazing, delicious meal that they always have. But also if you're just, if it's like a Tuesday and you're like, mm, I don't want, you know, this big thing, they have amazing salads and you can like throw some fresh shrimp on them. And they're just, it's just a perfect little relaxing moment at the end of the day. Yum. Okay. Sounds I like I eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, I it's, hope everyone's it's my favorite topic. Oh, absolutely. Food, food and drinks are my favorite topic. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and do you want to ask Christy our final, final question? Yes, Christy, we would love to know as you head into this exciting weekend and week, what is saving your life right now? Oh my gosh. I, I think I would have to say just this weather. I mean, just being able to like be outside and you know, when you're like, you're inside and you're working really hard and everything feels really stressful. And then you walk outside and like, the water's bright and the sun is shining and you're like, who cares about any of this? Like it's, <laughs> we get to live here and it's perfect. <laughs> That's a good one. Love it. It was a, it was a toasty one this week, but it was beautiful. It was, it was toasty, but it was still really nice. Gorgeous. Yes. That's a good one. Well, we are thinking about you. We are going Thank to you. post the information for both of your events that are not tomorrow and Sunday, but the next week. So people have plenty of time to get tickets. 
um, for the brunch and for the after party. And so we'll get those out there and we're going to be rooting for you. And it's just, it's just Thank another you. masterpiece. Way to go. Way to go. Incredible job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thanks for ladies. Thanks for Thanks having for me. 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 I'll have Thank a good weekend. Bye. 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 Man, I, I, we had that was her third time on, I think, I think and I learned right. something new about her every time. I know. I just I love understanding that process. Yeah, that's something like I I want you to do. I feel like that's oh something my gosh. in the future. It oh might be on gosh. your bingo card. Oh my gosh, what what would I, write? I could write about food and drink? That's true, but I don't know if you guys know this. I'm sure you do. Mary Cheatham is such a great writer, and like. Even it could be one blurb for a random postcard that's that so we nice. send out. It's just like so good always. And if, so nice. if I ever need anything edited, I'm like Mary Cheatham and Chip. Chip is fantastic at that too. I'm like, can you guys look at this? <laughs> oh my God. But Meg, then you, you churn out like all this content and it's so amazing. I mean, there's nothing that feels better to me than writing something and then having somebody go back yes. and, and zhuzh it up a little bit. Oh, and you're yes. like, that's exactly what I meant to say. 1000%. Or like taking a break, like Christy was yes. saying, taking you a break, have to walk away from it. it. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Writing is fun. Writing is fun. Yeah. Um, do you have anything that's saving your life? I think that what is saving my life, um, Sally is off on this backpacking trip. That's exciting. Um, I know she's in Alaska backpacking for four weeks. And so wow. I think that's what's saving my life seriously is just like, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel while she was gone, but I feel just really kind of at peace that I know that, that she's on a major adventure and that feels really good. That, she's going to come back like a new woman. Yes. Didn't you do um, I did. a lot of this growing up too? I did. Well, I did a similar, she's on Knowles and I did a Knowles trip in the Yukon territory um, that was six weeks. And then Chip did a semester in Kenya through Knowles. What? Yeah. So we've both done Knowles courses. We were a little bit older than she is now sure. when we both did ours, but um, that's yeah. so cool. And so I'm sure that helps too, because I'm familiar with the program and I feel right. really comfortable with where, you know, yeah, right. with the instruction that she's getting and all that kind of thing. I cannot wait to hear about that. And I'm just like, I'm just excited that she's four weeks without a phone. Oh my gosh. I'm sure she'll come back and be excited about that too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, being without a phone is the best. I know it really is. I love it. I know. Even okay. though I'm connected. I know. What's saving your life right now? So the thing that's saving my life is learning new things. Um, so we, I, I don't think I've talked about this on Coffee with MC yet, but my husband, husband and I, um, we are helping uh, run the bunkhouse, which mm -hmm. is a new kind of boutique hotel or inn in Beaufort. Speaking it's of adorable. Beaufort, it's You've got to go check cute. it out and follow them on social media because Meg's doing a fantastic Thank job. You. Thank you. The bunkhouse. The bunkhouse. So, um, so it, it's been a really cool process being a part of it, you know, throughout the renovation. Um, it, the design is beautiful. It's just been so much fun. And um, we've officially had our doors open for a month and it's been really a, a huge learning process, but really cool to see um, people also excited about the restoration, excited that it wasn't torn down because, you know, so many things, so much history. It's an old, old 1914 yeah. building that now um, has been reimagined into 12 units. Mm -hmm. So um, you can rent it by the room kind of hotel style. And we're just pumped about it. So if anyone's interested in learning more about it, you can go to bunkhouse101.com, shameless plug. Um, but also it's something it's new so in our good. community that, yeah. that is a nod to the past, but a little bit updated. That's right. And our magazine's going to print that has an article about the bunkhouse yes. in it. If you guys do not get the MCKRE magazine and you'd like to just send us a DM with your mailing address and we will drop a copy in the mail to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yay. Exciting things happening. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. See ya. Bye guys.